Lexi. How are you guys? And uh, good morning to everybody watching on the live stream in Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, um, and uh, in Twitter and in LinkedIn. Where, so we're streaming live. And we have uh, what uh, our generation would call OG chef, original gangsta, in terms of restaurants and culinary schools, Chef Gene Gonzalez. So please join us. Um, we're live together with Nancy Reyes Lumen streaming live in Houston, Texas. Uh, and we're awesome live with Gene, Chef Gene Gonzalez uh, of Cafe Isabel and Culinary, and culinary Arts and many other. Uh, can you do a short short? All right. I was going to say uh, the Center for Asian Culinary Studies, so the president and founder. So maybe to kick off our discussion, Nancy, uh, let, we'll let you do the introduction. Guys, uh, if you're watching this stream right now or if you're watching on the replay, please join us in our discussion. Put your questions in the comment section below and uh, we'll answer them during this live stream. So Nancy, maybe you can introduce our distinguished guest. Ako mag-introduce sa'yo. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Go. Um, wait, Gene, uh, the Gene Gonzalez with the double Z. He is he is a father and also a lolo. Doesn't look it. A farmer, a life coach, an artist in some in many mediums, an author, a sportsman. A hopeless romantic, tama ba? A rock and roller, <laughs> and a kitchen scoundrel. That is Jean. Jean, if I miss anything, it's your turn now to tell us your story and other things I missed. Completo naman Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so maybe, Jean, uh, just to kick off our discussion, uh, how did you get started with all of these things? So we're really curious. Uh, this show is about uh, Filipino, uh, your culinary DNA. How did you get started? Uh, what were your early influences? May I, may I have a preview to that? Uh, during that time, in the 70s yata, uh, along Wilson Street, hi, wala pang mga restaurant. Diba, Jean? Ano? Wala pa. Kasi... Uh, people were into different other services. Pero restaurants, nobody had yet dared to go into that um, until this Jean Gonzalez started it. Uh -uh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been cooking since I could stand up on a stool. Uh, I grew up in a... Although I, I didn't grow up in Pampanga, I grew up in a very traditional Kapampangan household. My lola ran, my grandma ran a very, very, very big uh, household. And in that household, there were always, there was always somebody coming and visiting. Uh, you you get all the social name names and they were visiting my grandma, particularly because they, they were entertained really well. My grandma... Uh, maintained the uh, Kapampangan or Sulipeno tradition of entertaining. So there was a big household. We had our own baker. We had our own hot kitchen cook. We had a butcher. And uh, my Lola kept a very big garden and uh, had so many things in the garden. We even had a small poultry house. We had a we had a, uh, how would you call it, an aviary where we kept the turkeys and the pigeons. We had pigs. We were taking care of pigs. And sometimes there would be an occasional calf that we, that would be tied uh, at the back area because it was such a big house in Quezon City. And um, yeah, I was exposed to food upstairs, which was very special food for all the for all the uh, visitors of my grandma, 
And I was exposed to the provincial cooking that the uh, household help uh, the employees of the household uh, had, which was quite imaginative too. And how many, uh, how many in your household, in the household? It, where I grew up, where in my grandma's house. So uh, I grew up there. And I said it was a very big household and. Uh, there would be deliveries every day coming from my grandma's farms of uh, whatever was in season. So the, the, the main kitchen was very busy all the time. They were either pressing uh, marsh crabs or talangka to make into talangka. Uh, they were to make into talangka bottled talangka they were they were doing nata de coco uh, whatever season there was there would be fresh tuba that was rushed to to manila uh, a lot of things even uh the very young green rice called duman uh i, mm -hmm. I experienced all of this and i was exposed to this and uh i was uh, there was a lot of encouragement for me to appreciate food and to cook. So I started with this and I was cooking ever since. I hid it from my uh, I hid it from my friends in high school and in grade school, you know, cooking then was was uh, relegated to the you know people were chauvinists and they were they relegate uh -huh. cooking to to the females. And yeah. I hid it Everybody until I had been cooking all the time until I got to uh, I graduated from college. I was still cooking. I was cooking for my uncle who who was a who was quite a gourmet at that time. It was brother Andrew Gonzalez, and uh, he really he really traveled. He was a religious, and I guess that was his form of sublimation. He loved food and he traveled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, he was my best critic, and I uh, he had so many friends who were people helping out in the university, like uh, uh, the Yuchenkos, uh, the Ortigases. Um, we're we're talking we're talking so many people who were helping the university, and uh, yeah. I got to cook for them too. Uh, so that was how I started. And uh, when I went into, I got into the bank, I wanted to be a chef, but my, mm -hmm. my father said, I didn't send you to a university to, you know, very old fashioned, <laughs> very conservative stuff. I didn't send you to a, uh, to a university and then you end up being a cook. But eventually, I was cooking for my friends during weekends. You know, you have a meager salary. And, you know, for you to enjoy your drinks with your, at, the end of, at the end of the week with your uh, banking friends, we, I would cook for them. And eventually, they said, open a restaurant. The manager caught wind of it. The, the vice president wanted to be invited. The treasurer of the bank wanted to be invited. And that was quite a vehicle for me to get recognized in the bank. And eventually, mm -hmm. I did resign. After three years, uh, I learned the ropes in the bank of food and beverage because I, I was perpetually reserving a table and taking out uh, people in the treasury department of big companies. I would, I would <laughs> uh, take the treasurers, I would take the vice presidents out for dinner. I was very personal when it came to when it came to uh, relationships and when it came to the bank. I my attention was called why I wasn't going out for lunch with my clients. And I told the treasurer of the bank, I said, I'm very personal. I take them out for dinner. And this is how I learned uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the you know, I had I, I had access to the best restaurants, and eventually, I did open my cafe. But a year after, I started, I I started running out of 
of uh, ideas on my very, you know, being a self-taught chef. So I decided I wanted to go out and uh, study. And at that time, Culinary Institute of America, <laughs> which had its me medium, curriculum medium English, was serving cafeteria food. So I opted, since I was cooking for the French embassy people, I got letters of commendation and I opted to do my stage in France. Eventually, uh, eventually, um, after my stage, I saw how, you know, I would take the train on weekends and go to another country, wake up there, save on hotel bills. And the, what enriching experience it was to, to go out and study. So How old were you then? I did. How old were you then? Uh, I was 25. I opened Cafe Isabel when I was 23. So about 24 to 25. Wow. I, uh, now, uh, it, was, you know, it was a little, it was a little uh, difficult also to deal. You know, I always thought of the bistro, you know, where people can communicate with with a with a very lack of uh, with a lack of uh, how would you call it technology Business, then yeah. I had very old documentaries on food and uh, yeah I, I saw what it was to be a chef the day I watched this movie called Who's Killing the Great Chefs of Europe the day after <laughs> I resigned I said I would really want to be a and I had a direct I had I directly communicated with uh, the people in my bistro. I saw this when I I saw our Italian American chef in Italian village. My mom was a partner there, and he had very good PR, and people came because of him. And yeah, I did the same thing. I went out of the kitchen, talked to the people, custom made what they wanted, their salt levels, their their, their fantasy dishes, which I wanted to, which I tried to recreate, but I was starting to, I was starting to uh, run out of ideas. So I did my stage in France and then eventually I did study. I went to the Culinary Institute of America, California Culinary Academy. And while I was in the Philippine team in fencing, I was with the meager allowances we had the sports people, I was fully exposed to eating on the street. Mm -hmm. My was anything that touched fire was fresh. So I, I I went to the different countries. I did the Asian circuit, and eventually I would stay or come back to the place that I competed in, and I would either go to a school or explore some more, uh, some more of the street food scene. So mm -hmm. what, uh, what our friends, Mark, Weens, Joel, Bruner, and all these guys were doing, I was doing about 10 years before. Oh, uh, my. Even enough to, uh, since <laughs> there were not, uh, the sanitary laws, sanitation laws were not really well enforced in these countries. I, I was brazen enough to try all of these. <laughs> <laughs> But before no. that, Gene, before that, Gene, uh, give us the background. Why you named your cafe, Cafe Isabel? Who is Isabel? Isabel is, Y-S-A-B-E-L, is a grand aunt that spoiled me rotten. She's a kapampangan. And uh, she really spoiled me rotten because she didn't have kids. Uh, okay. Sometimes my grandma would, would, would tell her sister, you know, you're, you're spoiling the kid rotten. Anyway, I did eventually get married to a woman called Isabel with an I. Uh, and uh, she gave me two very good kids. Uh, but uh, it, the, the marriage, uh, we had to part ways eventually. She's a very successful banker now. And uh, she gave me two kids that became chefs. Uh, I have Gino, who's doing a lot of high-end stuff right now during the pandemic. He's uh, he's doing a lot of uh, his his main clientele is the high-end areas of Dasma, 
Forbes, uh, BGC, and uh, I have Janina, who eventually became a food stylist and eventually uh, opened up and became a chef to small animals after she got her credentials as small animal nutritionist. And she is opening, uh, she's operating a place called Whole Pet Kitchen. And uh, she's now a chef to dogs and cats. Yeah, very successful, no? Yung uh, dalawa. <laughs> very successful. Um, just, uh, Jean, on Cafe Isabel, um, how was the scene then and how did you see it progress throughout the years, no? Uh, uh, at least the Philippine scene. Kasi that's, you know, quite important also in our culinary DNA collectively. Right? Yeah, and can you interject there, Jean? You founded the society, remember? Yes. And then, Member ako noon, together with Gabby and Louis Yamada yeah. and that. What was that? Well, okay. What happened? What happened was, I told you that there was there was a place, a secret place in Green Hills, that everybody, uh, everybody was very proud of because the chef would go out and talk with the people and interact. Uh, uh -oh. Also. It was a blessing in disguise because I was totally refused by all the malls. The 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 in part there was the mall, and uh, I was totally refused. I did not have a track record. They asked me if I had opened other restaurants, and, and I was all refused all the time. And eventually, I saw this shortcut from uh, San Juan to Makati going through from my place in Quezon City, and it was Susan Ross's place. This wonderful lady gave me a break. She said, okay, you take my fruit stand, renovate it and close it, make it air conditioned, and I turned it into a bistro cafe. And she said, eventually you're going to take over my whole house, which I did, which I did. And I opened another restaurant and I opened uh, uh, nine other restaurants after. Um, yeah, so uh, we got into an economic slump during the Marcos era where imports were totally banned. So okay. I thought of grouping together a lot of chefs, people like, yeah, Nancy, Louis Yamado, the, the Limsun brothers of North Park. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Henry Katoy, uh, Gabby Soon, Noel Silverio, Gabby Limsum, who also left us. Um, so many, Bambina Herbosa. We're we're talking we're talking of a whole of two big batches of Alta Cucina Filipina. Uh, Alta Cucina Filipina was a title that was given to us, a name of a group. She named the group, it was Doreen Fernandez our famous writer, uh, who was the person that gave this term and this name for our group. This group used Filipino ingredients. There was really nothing. We couldn't get any important stuff. You buy white wine in the supermarket, it's probably golden or yellowing, you know, from age. Uh, red wines were oxidized because of old stocks. We, we really could not get, only the hotels could import. And uh, the locals had to fend for themselves because we could not get anything that was imported. So we started using local products and started integrating it into the cuisine that we do. The hot cuisine, the bistro cuisine. And suddenly, Filipino influences started coming and we were holding very exclusive dinners for for uh, the Shane de Rotisers, which is the oldest gourmet club in the world. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was it was a challenging, very exciting, but also quite depressing era when the Filipino chef had really nothing to work on. Now the the new crop of chefs are so lucky they can get anything they want for as long as they're willing to pay for it. But way back before the EDSA revolution, people were, you know, the chefs were really uh, just relied on their wits. And this is how Alta Cocina Filipina 
or Philippine high cuisine was born. And up to now, uh, we we practice this in school. Uh, I I was the first person that put an obligated students in a culinary school to take up Philippine cuisine. Th this is not because I wanted to. One day, somebody asked me to cook Filipino food. And, and doing Filipino food. I was doing French. I was doing Italian. All my teachers. And suddenly, it just dawned upon me that, wow, I don't cook or I hardly cook. I hardly cook Filipino food except at home, but never promote it as an item that you can really serve and you can be proud of. That spurred me. And uh, yeah, my students now are taking modules in Filipino cuisine. And we have an Asian program. And one-fifth of that Asian program is Filipino food. Uh, nice. We've done explorations in Filipino food. Um, being the first... Be, being the first uh, Magnolia and Monterey chef uh, in the country, I did the rounds. I did the rounds of all our main islands. And uh -huh. I, I didn't really tour the sites. What I did was I toured the markets. I wanted to see what, what, what they had, what version of Bulalo they had, what, uh, what version of adobo they had. I wanted to see this because it was, it's very interesting that you have 7,000 plus islands and you have an interpretation based on the terroir, the environment, an interpretation of whatever dish we had. So, wow, uh, it, was, it was an eye, uh, the, the experience of this was eye opening. And uh, yeah, we, we, we did find out some investigative stuff on. How, how the differences in regional cuisines uh, and regional dishes were. Okay. Okay. So um, before we... Good. Wait. Uh, before we proceed, let's uh, acknowledge yung mga nagko-comment. No? So we have uh, Shirley Yanga, Santo Shanga, uh, proud student. <laughs> Tagal na. So the culinary school was started 2000, no? Um, and of course, uh, Jer Jershwin Garcia, uh, Chef Jean, love your food. And of course, uh, Michael Alim from Hi, uh, Michael. Restaurant uh, in Madrid, uh, <laughs> watching uh, our show. So, um, Nancy, you have a question, or uh, I have a follow-up question. Sige, you mean Anton? Um, galing kasi Chef Jean ng. Uh, You've seen it. You've started promoting Filipino food throughout the years. Uh, was there anything, and uh, until now, you were promoting Filipino food. Uh, what's your um, current analysis of Filipino food? Ba? Uh, how would you describe it? And do you think uh, the Filipino food is there already in the world? Or what else do we need to do to push it forward? Uh, thanks to people like Zimmer. Bourdain, Mark Queens, and thanks to the new age of technology and communication, Filipino food is starting to get recognized. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, we did our share. Our, our school did our share by sent. We were being sent to places like Beijing, uh, uh, Saba, all of this, and there was a there was a particular exchange of uh, ideas and people if you explain filipino food to other people even the concept of eating with your hands which uh -huh. there are several ways of eating with the hands uh if you explain this well to any visitor or any foreigner who, who's open-minded then they will appreciate the dishes because you got to explain people want to know what they're eating or people, like wine, people want to know yes, wine. Yeah. The, the environment, where it grew and all that. The same for food. And what we're doing is we, we're, we're, right now, I'm working with a British platform 
that is now uh, spreading internationally. It's called RASA. And there's a Filipino course, which uh, I've been working with three other equally, equally, uh, how would you call it? Equally creative chefs. They, they're now based abroad. And these chefs have not deviated. They, they're not doing fusion. They have not deviated from the traditional recipes. It's just that they have been a little bit more creative. They've created, uh, they've created um, their own versions and uh, still on very good Filipino lines. And now we are going to be launching and teaching the course this coming Feb. And uh, yeah, this is going to be another another uh, another uh, boost for Philippine cuisine. Can you, like, can, you give an example? can you give an example of what that rasa will do for Filipino cuisine? Okay, the, the first adobo modules will be about very simple, easy to cook, and trying to uh, trying to create a certain confidence. Uh, while I'm annotating, I'm, I'm doing all the Filipino annotations uh, of, of the food. So we're doing arroz caldo, sinigang, and kare kare. And we're, we're doing all these annotations while the first part of the module is being taken. Eventually, the second part of the module of rasa will be about, uh, will be about other dishes like adobo bracing uh the importance of banana leaves and all that and the third would be our foreign influences that have helped shape and recipes that have helped shape filipino cuisine uh this is uh the, the uh i did a lot of the docus a lot of the talkies i went to the i went to the fields i harvested rice and showed the all audience you know every speckle of this is one grain mm -hmm. of rice i went into the swamps we harvested the <laughs> nectar coming from uh, the palms to to make sugar and to make uh vinegar so you know show them what a banana tree is like harvested the banana use the leaves show them so this, it's all about familiarizing themselves with Filipino produce and culture. Uh, I was interviewed about eating with the hands. And uh, yeah, I, I told them what a, a, a lot of foreigners who have tried our Kamayan style, because there is, a, there is a Middle Eastern form, there is an Indian form, and there is a Malay and Filipino form of eating with the hands. And uh -oh. uh, explain this and once you follow real sanitary or sanitation methods, you become more grounded to the food. The food gets closer to your other all, uh, senses, like olfactory senses, because you are coming this close, you are not distanced by the spoon. So the sensory experience of eating with the hands uh, really grounds you up. So I was interviewed about that. And I, I think I did a very good explanation. Also about the Filipino concept of why there are so many dips and so many sauces. Uh, people have to know that Filipino food is participative. It does not insult the chef if you use a dip or a sausawan, but you are participating with the success of the chef in the dish where you appreciate and you create a uh, a self appreciation for what the chef has cooked. So, um, yeah, we explained all of this. I went to the oldest Chinatown in the world, which is Binondo, and we started. I started explaining all of this. You know, Galing, uh, influences. It was a very good journey. It was a very good reminder for me to push on with Filipino cuisine. That's good. Okay. So, um, again, we saw, uh, later you can explain to us how Bourdain came into the picture of uh, Cafe Isabel. Was he part of that um, 
movement no uh birthday i was i was contacted to present the spanish side of philippine cuisine the thing about bourdain was uh well anton was there and the thing the thing about bourdain was um he they presented my sequence only la a lot of a lot of filipino friends got to watch it but it never was shown to the world uh and uh when i prepared lunch after after the the hispanic side of filipino food i i uh prepared lunch which is a cocido sulipeño which bourdain liked and he he said he wanted to shoot it but his they were already off cam yeah. oh. uh, of course uh people are very professional they said no we're eating and uh <laughs> he loved the tocino del cielo wow so, yeah i love that during the bourdain during the bourdain anniversaries to commemorate bourdain we do serve the cocido uh and we serve the tocino del cielo which uh he really loved it and uh that although that was not part of what we were showing uh he he stayed on he stayed on and he ate and that's where he really ate so yeah and uh Galing. a lot of people like bobby chin okay uh yeah okay all these people um, were were, were helped. yeah Nance, uh, before we proceed, Chef Jean, uh, we'll uh, share some of the photos just to have a context also. Um, and then maybe you can caption them <laughs> one by one before we yeah. continue our discussion. Uh, ako, ako na. Ah, wait. You're... Nawala ka, Chef. There. Yeah. All right. There. All right. So we'll start... Um, Well, this is in the vineyards in Thailand. Great. No. This, these are my that's Janina and Gino. Hi. So Galing, that's Janina no? and Gino. Yeah. We're all set okay. for a family picture. Two chefs, two kids, and two chefs. How 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 many made you a lolo? Uh just Gino yet. Janina, not how many? I have That's three. It. Ah, wow. <laughs> and two. Okay. Okay. I love that. So this I love is a in, uh, about 15 years ago, the, you know, I, I tried Thai wine and uh, it was not really that drinkable. But as I tried it every year, because I love going to Thailand just to eat, I, I told Gino on the on the on the fifth year that we were tasting the wine. I said they they're starting to get better, and I befriended, and I brought my students to the vineyards, and it's been 17 years. These people are my friends. They, you know, we we uh, we joined the harvest. We joined the winemaking experience, and uh, this is the closest thing. They integrated it into their tourism, uh, their tourism. And wow, yeah. uh, they're doing very good wine now. Pero chef, can Philippines uh, produce our own wine with our terroir? Oh, hindi. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can produce uh, just like the, the terroir and depending on the soil, you just have to test what grapes uh, would be for the soil test, uh, would be uh, partnered to the mm. soil a lot of strata. Uh, the best vineyards, I would say, would be in the non-typhoon belt areas where the, uh, the 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 grapes can the grape vines can mature. Uh, we're talking Mindanao. Many of them are rebel infested. Maybe uh, uh, maybe we can we can uh, maybe a lot of them can can gain a lot of uh, how would you call it? Can gain a lot of uh, livelihood uh -oh, since many, from many of them are short of li livelihood. Uh, these areas are beautiful. They're volcanic soil. Our coffee is 
very good and it's been winning our chocolate. I don't see why our grapes can't. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah, na si Bourdain. All right. You told us the story, na. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Let's. Well, I'm around <laughs> with my uh, with my friend's nephew. Put him, I put him on a big stock pot. He's big now. He's probably almost <laughs> uh, I would say almost thirty by now. <laughs> yeah, so you were you were you were quite young then. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Oh, well, okay. if you, yeah, that's a that's uh that was my Anglo Arab. I love taking care of horses before, and I loved riding them. Eventually, my kids, I took actually I was a fence sitter. My kids took lessons, and the the instructor said instead of you watch watching, why don't you take it with them? So I took it for eleven years. I took equestrian riding. Wow. All right. Ganda. Ganda. Oh, ito. Karate. Ano so, ito? there's her. Saan ka dyan? Set, no, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Part, part of the group of the black belts that I have uh, taught from from scratch. Uh, the, these are, these are, uh, we, I spent, I guess I spent a good and big portion of my life uh, in, uh, in Karate Do. But uh, I got into an accident, not a sports accident. I got into a freak accident and I injured my shoulder, which uh, eventually I had to rehab. And I took off for a few years before I had to go back to Karate Do again. Okay. Wow. So this is, uh, after I injured myself, my, my friend said, why don't you take up fencing? It's one arm and uh, sayang your legs. So, okay. So I did fencing and two years after, two years after I, uh, um, how would you call it? I got into the Philippine team by, by luck and by chance. And uh, eventually I wanted to, I wanted to win something for our country. So it was a very difficult, uh, it was a very difficult 11 years where I became the oldest person in the team eventually. But the 11 years I spent with the Philippine team, uh, it was a slow creep to the two Southeast Asian gold medals. I would open my, my kitchen and then work out with my coach. And then office work. And then in the evenings, work out again with my team. And then come back home and sleep. That was a an eleven year grind. Uh, it was it was wonderful because I wanted to stay in the team because I had free passage of going around Asia and going around everywhere for training, like Germany or what. So, uh, uh, it was free passage. It was also free passage to food. So oh, yeah. there you go. Nice. One of the reasons why. We're losing you, Jean. Ayan. Ayan. Ayan, ayan. Okay. Wait. Ito, ito. That is the fruit uh, shot. It's the fruit ninja shot. And uh, this is uh, one of my trick shots in Mass Flex. I became the researcher and brand ambassador of Kitchen Pro. This is a line, uh, you know, way back. People had a lot of the cucineros, a lot of the chefs had to buy very expensive, uh, very expensive knives made in Germany, made in France, made in Italy. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that people could reach out to and afford. Nancy is doing the uh, mass flex, which is another line of another kitchen line, but I'm doing Kitchen Pro. And every uh, item I test personally and research. It took me three years to give the go signal and say, okay, let's bring out the knives. 
and uh, <laughs> these knives are not in the country uh they are used by hardcore cucineros they're not also the type of knives that you treat like a rolex like you treat like jewelry because these are very inexpensive but very sharp and very sturdy knives Galing, ah. <clears throat> fruit ninja ang style <laughs> So Ayan that's na. the mass flex knives. And eventually we started accessorizing. We started putting uh, blade protectors. Eventually we went into non square, which I, I also test. Uh, I wanted things to be very durable. I wanted things to be very durable. Uh, also, uh, yeah. Um, Eventually, we started collaborating with other uh, Filipino products and with, with cooking groups because we wanted to we wanted to really have a Filipino uh, design product for the Philippine market. Nice. Hello to Hiren. Hi, Hiren. <laughs> Kitchen okay. Pro. All right. When was this? Okay. Uh, you look different. Okay. This is a view of my uh, little wine cellar. I started collecting priced, not really priced, but I started collecting well-rated wines and wines that told the story. I was console I trained in the vineyards of Torres in Spain. Uh, I got I got very, how would you call it, very tight with the employees and with the owner of Torres Vineyards, Don Miguel. I hope he's okay now. I, he's okay right now because I have not heard from him for quite some time. Uh, he's uh, he, he's uh, gotten very uh, ripe and very aged. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I collect these wines because I, I'm part of a group called Ord Mondial de Gourmets de Gustatours and the International Wine and Food Society. And we do a lot of uh, tasting, testing. Yeah. I'm All right. Eating. Yeah. So uh, we'll, pick, we'll pick up some comments. Sabi ni Michael Alem, parang fruit ninja lang. Agree, we invest sa mga mahal at quality knives. Yeah. Isa sa mga precious gems ng mga chefs. Um, and uh, Marin, no... Cucinero, welcome home yeah. to the Philippines. You're in Manila na pala, one day of quarantine. Uh, may kaimus ka ba daw, chef? Sa wines mo. <clears throat> yes. May kaimus. I love, especially, uh, one of the things I love with Kaimus is their uh, Zinfandel and their uh, wine called Conundrum. It's a white wine that's, a, that's at least a blend of three very uh, aromatic grapes. I love it. Yeah. And I visited wow. the vineyard. Nice. All right. Next photo. Yon. Sino tong mga to? Okay. This, this is Gino. This is uh, Toto Erfe and Francis Roman. They're my students. Gino uh, does a lot of uh, uh, really specialty food. Toto Erfe is a purveyor and also does a lot of uh, family family takeout meals during the pandemic. Francis Roman has turned a very technical guy who's uh, into pastry and baking, has turned videographer. And he is, uh, his work is really wonderful. I've been working with him on my videos and I've been working with him for Rasa. It's a, uh, Terrific uh, videographer. It's going to be my future son-in-law. Wow, <laughs> talaga? Kino Jan, who is he there? The middle the, the what? First one, right. That's Francis thought, Roman. Uh, <laughs> Hi, uh, Janina. All in the family, you know. Uh, uh, Gina, <laughs> who's married to Gino, is also a chef. Oh, uh, nga. Uh, ang galing, ah. Uh, also, well, Toto Erfe, his wife is a chef and teaches grade schoolers, young kids. The guy in the shades, uh, the sunglasses. I'm not in the shades Aki, at the back. Uh, uh, teaches young kids. 
Okay. Okay, this one. What's What's the story of well, this Well, it's photo? just a shoot for uh we wanted a an outdoor shoot. And uh yeah, I think they, the the photographer and the uh they captured the essence of the the shoot. I love cooking with open flame. Uh I love doing pizzas uh, on open flame. I've been doing it for the past 20 years. Yeah. Okay, that, that's uh, that's the group. There's, uh, aside from Toto Erfe and Gino, there's also our, our the head of our pastry department, Junjun de Guzman, who's with uh, Tony Bourdain. Uh, yeah, quite an inspirational really? photo. Oh, All right, what's this? Okay, this is a 1995 Chiang Mai. This is my second medal. Uh, that's my. These are my teammates. You see one of them, Jovius Stampador, wiping his tears. Uh, it was a very difficult climb uh, going. We were, we were against a very superior team, but I think... Uh, good psycholo psychological counseling and training really did very well for for this victory. Uh, after this, I had resigned and I gave in my time as for one year as a coach. I formed the women's saber team. Yeah. Well, there's Bobby Chin. We're in touch. How is he? Where is he now? What's he doing? Uh, Does he still have a show? Does he still have yeah. a show? Bobby Chin is very, very big in the Middle East. Oh, okay. I think uh, half uh, Egyptian, he's big in the Middle East. I think, I don't know if he's based in Dubai, but he's very big in the Middle East. Okay. Okay. All right, galing. So, wow, so inspiring. And dami mo palang accomplishment uh, throughout the year. Siguro oh, one of the. I have many questions pa. Oh, sige, sige. Go, may question rin ako on learnings. But go ahead, Nancy, ikaw muna. Ah. Relationships. How do you balance relationships with your children, with your customers, with your significant others? Others uh, with the with an S at the end. Others. S -s 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 uh, for children, I guess I you know when they were growing up, I've always had time for them, but it was always the orientation was always towards the kitchen. So they they they, they got into food service. They became chefs. Uh with uh i'm off sports now so i have more time but uh during the time i was into sports i had already prepared for a career in art uh when i was about to retire i said you know uh might as well get painting i was painting since the 80s and i wanted to use uh whatever you know i, I i'm part of a group and they're very nurturing and very encouraging. And uh, I wanted to use my paintings for fundraising. Um, I did seven one man shows. And uh, yeah, uh, I was able to raise uh, some money, which I, I gave to uh, different foundations so that, um, yeah, they, they could use money. So uh, I'll be going back after this pan after uh, this big thing about the pandemic. I'm going to go back again, and I'm going to uh, devote a lot of time to my art. I already promised a one man twenty three. Is that the mural? So yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, but, well, this is a mural I did in Cebu. I painted on the wall. You can see the on the left side. You can see the uh, the puso, 
Kaya ah, dahil yeah. yung eleksyon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 what restaurant was this in? Uh, no, this was in uh, my friend's, uh, this was my in friend's wall. So I uh-huh. did that. That's nice. I did that. And then uh, I have a mural in Camp John Hay. It's a 4 by 12 mural. It was recently blogged by Marshall Waters, the vlogger. And uh, yeah, it's called The Flight of Food. I did a surrealistic interpretation of food and, uh, you know, painted everything from with no models, just, just the brain. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm using art basically to I uh, when when I sell my paintings I basically use it for charity. All right. So is, is this the That's the one? Yep, that's uh is that nice. uh, no that's just still life. That's huh? just a still life. That's uh, a still one of life. your works. Okay. I think yeah. But the, there's one that's bigger. That's I don't know if you have it, Anton. Wala. Ah, uh, yung may lechon lang. Tatlo lang yung na ano. Uh, Ito lang. Sa kaya uh, may lechon. Okay. Yeah, uh, you can visit that. That's in Forest Lodge in Baguio. That's my biggest work. It's four by twelve feet. Where's your next biggest work? If you're going back to painting, oh. where is it going to be? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think having big works is quite impractical. They're only for they're only for places like hotel lobbies or museums. Uh, I don't think I'm in that league yet. But uh, yeah, I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of expression expressionist interpretations. That's what they turn as my style. All right. But it's so still, from from farming, eh, from from okay, from food to painting and now writing. You said you have a new concept that you would like to write a book on. You mentioned something like that. Well, you want yeah. My last book was the Kitchen Scoundrel, an annotation of an annotation and test. T- testing of the recipes of a man called Efren Bunkin. Efren Bunkin was a serial technologist. He wrote a book, a Filipino book. And in the 60s, this was in the 60s, he had recipes like focaccia. He had recipes like uh, like uh, sourdough. They, they were way ahead of the Philippine, uh, the Philippine scene. And I did annotations and tests and had my school test the 400 recipes he had. And it's available now in National Bookstore. I did not touch the recipes. I just made annotations. So this book I'm writing is all about the experience of labor. Uh, yeah, it's about the experience of labor. So this is what I'm, I'm work, I'll be working on. Probably I'll finish in about a couple of years. Okay. Okay. So we've always um, regarded you as a man for all seasons and um, persuasions, but I never, we, some of us have not really known you as a sharp witted businessman. Is there, is there something in your bone that makes you a businessman or do other people do that for you? Well, yeah, other people would do that for me. I'm, I'm, uh, there, there, there is this, uh, there is this line between, uh, art and between commercialism. Um, it hasn't been the journey, the journey, my, my, my culinary journey has not been all that smooth. A lot, a lot of times they were rocky. Uh, certain, er, certain times of strife, like uh, the Marcos 
era, the the revolution, the the, the coup d'etats and changes of presidents. Uh, these were times when I near nearly had to close this pandemic. This pandemic has been a very great challenge. Uh, it, it's it's very difficult to uh, to go through and to survive. And uh, yeah, if if I were probably better in business, I'd probably uh, just breeze through this and uh, do something do something else or be colder and just say. Okay, let's just skip this and do something more profitable. Okay. But I can't. But yes, yeah, but your business, but your businesses so are. I know, what, uh, I know doing. So, yeah, I have to stick to this. I, I, when you say, I don't think I'm very. When you say businessman, I don't think I'm a very good businessman. I'm terrific in business because, um, yeah, I'm still. You get that? You're But uh, I wanted to ask Chef Jean Hello. about. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Yes. Parang humina lang yung internet. Ano kaya? May dumaan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're back. You're back. <laughs> so, um. Jean. Yon. Ganda ang ganda ng story ni Chef Jean, no? Daming uh, the whole story, and I'm sure you know the younger generation would really appreciate. Yep. Uh, well, actually. He's already with the younger generation because of his school. Uh, so, and because of his kids, no? Galinga, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole family into culinary. Yeah. Uh, hindi lang pang uh, tao, pang ano de. Pang aso pa. <laughs> That's Janina. And wow, Janina, you're getting married. And getting married. Uh, the little girl, little girl before. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, very uh, popular na uh, yung popular si Janina on the pet side, no? At, yeah. uh, ano ba? Pet culinary ba? <laughs> pet culinary ba? Tao? So we'll we'll wait for Chef Jean to uh, to join, no? Uh, well, uh, um, ano in uh, uh, he evaded my ano significant what? others. You uh, evaded okay. the significant other relationship. No, no, no. I, I, the, the, the thing just dropped. Huh? So, what was your question? Significant others. How did you balance that into your so many hats that you're wearing? Oh, okay. Uh, in other words, did you ever have the time to really fall in love? Yes. Why not? Why not? I've had relationships that uh, that lasted years, okay. and uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, a lot of women like chefs because they're very nurturing. <laughs> they 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 cater to to uh, whims. They cater to to uh, likes. Okay, just like food. So, uh, I guess, uh, yeah. Do they in, do they inspire you in your cooking, like in making recipes or making your books? Of course, of course. But isn't that the inspiration for all for all people who are engaged uh, in in some pursuit? Doesn't have okay, to be art. Say you lang. Have, have to be arts. All these all these uh, all these powerful. Uh, Magnets, they all had, you know, they all had inspirations, whether it was their wives or their significant significant others. You know what, Anton and audience, uh, one thing I noticed with Jean, no matter how 
how high, high the odds are or I, I've never seen Jean really Ewan ko, I've never seen you angry. Maybe patago. I've never huh? cool cool Jude yan eh. Diba? Or I'm, ano, may tinatago ka bang galit? Well, a, a lot of a lot of the people I've worked with say I wear a swastika on my on my uh, all I needed was uh, a swastika on my my arm. Uh <laughs> You know, some people get very scared, and sometimes you know, uh, I create a Zen experience for people who don't, uh, who uh, are not very obedient or who don't want to follow uh, the rules of the kitchen. Okay, in fact, we've we've done a lot of we've done a lot of uh, very good and successful ventures that we have been consultants to like vikings uh two seasons we've done the seattle's group uh yeah Th these are all these are all uh uh we've done maxes turned it around owner sells it for a profit i mean uh, the, um we've done we've done a lot of concepts and uh I guess people saw saw the people saw the swastika. People saw the the <laughs> that, that stupid mustache. You know, <laughs> the scoundrel. The scoundrel. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it, it's it, sometimes it, it does work. It does work. Yeah. My, so my, with, my, all, my with all these things that Jean. With everything that you've been doing, farming, including and planting, what's your bucket list, pa, for twenty? Yes, for twenty twenty two. Ano bang ano mo or in the post pandemic? Ano ba bang uh, what, what do you want to accomplish? Uh, bucket list. Bucket list is when you die. <laughs> when you kick the bucket, diba? That's that's what you call bucket list. Things to do before you die. Um. It's just to continue on. It's just to continue on. And uh, like, what a sad thing. Cafe Isabel last week celebrated its 40th anniversary. Wow. Wow. But it's so sad. It's the pandemic. How do we do a celebration? We'll just have to celebrate next year. But yeah. we have been in business for 40 years. Okay. So if you do your mathematics, you'll know how old I am. Yeah, you're 100 years old. <laughs> anyway, what is your fantasy? Fantasy is for everything to normalize. That's uh, not that's a fantasy. That's a wish. Uh, your fantasy talaga. Fantasy. Who do you want to be? Uh, that years ago I had pledged Filipino cuisine to get into the world map. Hey, and I've I've been working on it. I've really been working on it, and uh, by 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 stroke of luck, things just things just uh, start off by falling into place, and then I just push it, and I'm going to be pushing this rasa thing. And eventually, yeah, we're the the school. I want the school to be something I would uh, be able to uh, leave a legacy to. We've had we've had some very successful products, very successful chefs who are now high up there. They're executive chefs. They're already entrepreneurs. Some of them are entrepreneurs. Some of them are teaching too. Like we had Shirley Santos Yanga who. You know she's doing waves in Singapore. Uh, yeah, where I want the school to 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 proliferate, and uh, I want Philippine cuisine to really go, go up there. Okay, so now putting everything together, how would you really define your culinary DNA? It seems like you're everywhere. 
but uh, deep inside you, what is really the one that uh, runs in the vein in the veins of uh, Jean Gonzalez? What flavor? <laughs> what runs in the veins? It is just what I told you. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, I'm I'm just a chef. I'm just a cocinero. But I'd like to push things. I'd, I'd like to investigate. I'd like to research. So, uh, and yeah, I'm very proud of being Filipino. You can see that through, through my sports, through my art, and through my cooking. So, yeah, I just want to continue and have a vehicle to continue. I mean, you know, it's not easy to, it's not easy to, uh, get through this pandemic with with a school and uh, with uh, a cafe. Um, I hope we get through this so that we can I can just continue what I'm doing and continue my work. I'm just happy with what I'm doing. I'm happy with my work. So I, I don't even call it work. That's good. Anton? That's good. No, um, we... So, uh, very inspiring story. I didn't really know uh, na gano ka pala ka lawak and uh, <laughs> yung experience ni Jean. Uh, and uh, you know, being proud of Filipino, uh, I think I learned a lot from doing that and being consistent throughout the years. So, I would just like to ask you for your final message, uh, Chef Jean, on uh, especially to the industry, to everybody, continuing to have a problem with the pandemic, di ba? Uh, putting to have issues uh, going into 2022 and message for them for this coming year? Well, it's uh, tenacity, perseverance. These are the qualities that we have to appeal to. And these are the qualities that we have to show the future people who will man also our industry. Uh, the a lot have a lot have benefited from this technology that we have but a lot also have been disadvantaged because of too much convenience i think people have to be tenacious enough uh people have to persevere continuously and yeah. uh that's what it's all about that's what uh good cooking is all about all right. All right. Congratulations, uh, Thank Nancy. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anton and Nancy. Thank you very much for inviting me to your Thank show. You. And more power to all your plans. I know you have. Ay, ang kulang na lang hindi kita pinakanta kasi alam ko you're a rock and roller already na. Pwede naman nila makita sa YouTube. May bago kaming in-upload. Talaga? Huh? Ah, talaga? <laughs> We're just having fun and it really worked very well. All right. Uh, That's good. Uh, That's what Gene yeah. is all about. He combines play and work together and blends them into something beautiful. Uh -oh. And I think uh, for me lang, uh, just, um, I, I like, you know, you're very proud of uh, the Filipino food and heritage. But uh, what really strikes me also was, uh, I think, uh, being a parent, no, and there are parents out there, uh, your proof of success is your kids talaga eh. And uh, I'm so happy to see, <laughs> you know, the kids part of the culinary. Galing, galing. Uh, seen Gino, uh, heard about Janina also. And galing, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole community. And uh, God bless you more, Chef Jean. Uh, continue to live an awesome life and continue to push, you know, be proud of our Filipino heritage. And more power to Cafe Isabel. All right. I'll, give, I'll, I'll also later I'll give you something on a new concept I'm trying to do. It's all about collagen. <laughs> all right. Oh, Thank you guys. Okay. I'm yes. It's the biggest importer in the Philippines from Germany. What? What? We'll talk. <laughs> all right. All right, maraming salamat. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, please like and share this video to your family and friends who will be interested with Chief Gene 
God sa uh, Chef Jean Gonzalez story. Maraming salamat. Live an awesome night. God bless. Uh, can you do a short story?